Hi, AP Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. We are moving on to Chapter 4, Section 2, Day 4, or Lesson 4, of um, the Practice of Statistics. We're going to talk about um, blocking and match pairs design today. Um, this is still we're under the category of experiments. Um, and this is like um, different ways to experiment. So, so far, um, in the last lesson, we talked about um, randomized uh, completely randomized experiments um, and in this case th there's like a little bit more organization to the experiment. Um, there's still of course randomization because that's necessary um, but it's not completely randomized design. So um, we have um, the first thing is the, the process of separating um, experimental units or subjects into groups and blocks, not randomly. So you, typically, um, this is called blocking, um, and typically you would do this based on a particular trait of the subjects um, that you believe would have the greatest influence on um, the results of the study. Okay, so Blocking is basically like the same thing as stratification in observational studies and sampling, um, but it's used specifically for experiments. Um, so you want to be careful not to confuse the two terms, but yes, blocking and strata, or blocks and strata, are essentially the same thing except one for sampling and um, observational studies and the other one's for blocking. Um, so then the next thing is the random assignment of experimental units to treatments uh, is carried out separately within each block. Um, so this is basically like the design of the study, uh, the design of the experiment. It's called a randomized block design. Okay, so basically what happens in a, in a randomized block design is you separate individuals or um, the subjects or the units into um, the blocks. Um, and there may be two blocks or three blocks um, based on a particular trait that you think is going to affect the response. Um, and then you randomly um, assign the treatments within each block. So like maybe we think that the, I don't know, we're testing a, a new medication on the market um, and we think it's going to affect men differently than women. So we would actually separate the experiment into two separate experiments. Um, we do placebo and treatment to the, for the women, um, completely ram randomized design within the women's group, and then do the same thing for the men's group. Um, and then you compare results within each, with like the women, you compare their results, and then the men, you compare their results, but like you don't compare the men to the women because you think that they're going to respond differently anyways. So there's no reason for you to compare the men to the women's results. Okay, and the last one is the matched pairs design. And it's basically a special case of blocking um, in which you have either um, paired an individual to themselves and you compare like a before experiment and after experiment results, um, or you pair up individuals that are really, really similar um, and then you randomly assign one treatment to one and the other treatment to another. Um, and there's a couple different cases where a matched pairs design is definitely going to be a better uh, a, be a better design than, than others. Um, it just kind of depends on what the situation is. So we'll take a look at a couple examples so you can see. So again, that is the matched pairs design. Um, okay, so here's a couple examples. Um, we're going to actually like design these studies. Um, so they'll probably take a little while, um, and I would highly recommend you looking at the examples first, trying them, seeing if you understand like the concept, um, and then checking out the answer when you're done. So example one is about um, researchers who want to test whether a new detergent for clothes that require hand washing cleans better in warm or cold water. I decided to perform an experiment using numerous pieces of dirty laundry as the experimental units. The response variable is a cleanliness rating scale from zero to very dirty to 10 very clean. How should researchers deal with the fact that light colored clothing tends to come cleaner in warm water? Okay, so the idea here is that we start with many pieces of dirty laundry and then um, 
we kind of want to block them or separate them based on the color, um, light colors and dark colors, because they both react differently to detergents um, and the detergent with the water, right? The mix of the water plus the detergent. So um, what we do is we take the laundry like you normally do or like you're supposed to do in case you've never done laundry in your life. Um, you're supposed to separate the lights from the darks um, and you wash the, the lights in warm water and the, the darks in cold water. Um, but anyways, <laughs> life lessons. Um, hopefully you haven't, hopefully you've, you've, you've helped your parents or something with laundry before. But anyways, um, so you take the many pieces of dirty laundry, separate them first into light colored clothing and dark colored clothing. So these are your blocks, the light clothes um, and then the dark clothes. So you want to like treat those as two separate experiments. So the light clothes, um, they're going to go through the experiment where you randomly assign half of the clothes to warm water and half of the clothes to dark water, <laughs> to cold water. And then you do the same thing with the dark clothes is you assign, randomly assign, right? Here's where the random assignment comes in. Randomly assign half of them to um, warm water and half of them to cold water and then compare the results at the end. So here's kind of the diagram of the experiment, right? You've got your light clothes and your dark clothes. Those are your blocks, okay? Then you ran, use random assignment. You randomly assign each, like, you know, half of the light clothes to cold water, half to warm water, and then you compare results at the end. And then you do the same thing with the dark clothes. So um, these are your treatments, right? The cold water and the warm water are your treatments. The random assignment is how you're getting that randomization, right? Which is one of your crucial um, parts of experiments. Um, and then here are your blocks. Okay, this is not a matched pairs design, uh, but it is a blocked design. Okay, blocked based on um, uh, the light or darkness of, of the clothing because you think that that's going to have a huge effect on the results of the study. Okay, so here I kind of labeled like here's your blocks, here are your treatments, you compare your results. Um, if you're using a flowchart, kind of like the one that I just made, um, if that's how you're going to design a study um, on a test or the AP or something, um, you have to describe how you're going to do the random assignment um, below. So maybe you could like star it and say, I'm going to randomly assign half of the clothes to cold water and half to warm water by, you know, labeling them all one to 100 and then, or one to N and then using a random number generator, pick half of them to go to the cold water and half of them to go to the warm water. Something like that. But you have to like explain that to get full credit. So you would add like a little side note kind of like this, um, just to make sure that you have explained how you're going to randomly assign um, the units to the treatments. Okay. Um, all right, so example two, I just thought that was a really cute picture. Um, so suppose researchers wanted to test whether a new food supplement would help pigs gain weight. How might you design this experiment to best test the question? All right, so go ahead, try it on your own so if you can figure out if it should be blocked or completely randomized or matched pairs, uh, and then check your answer in a second. Okay, so first, if you're deciding to block, you want to figure out what you're blocking by. Um, and that begs the question, like, what do you think is most going to influence your results um, or would affect how much uh, weight a pig would gain? So in this case, um, I'm going to make the argument that I think their current weight is going to have the largest effect on how much they gain or lose. Um, <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do is actually list um, or can, you know, put in order the pigs from lightest to heaviest. Um, and then what I'm going to do is group the pairs that are most similar. Okay, so this is a matched pairs design. I'm going to group the ones that are most similar 
based on the thing that I want to block by, which is weight. Um, and then between those two, I randomly assign one to the old food, sup or just like the regular food, and then one that gets the food with the supplement. So look something like this, right? I have my list, my lightest to heaviest, um, and I'm going to pair my top two lightest together, and then my second two lightest, the next two lightest together, all the way down to the fourth and third heaviest, and then the second and the first heaviest, because you're going to assume what you're doing is you're assuming that like they're going to react to the food in a similar fashion. So then within each of those, you assign one to treatment, you know, the, the new supplement, and one gets the, um, the old food without the supplement. Um, and you can, and then this is where the randomization comes into play. So one gets, you know, you can flip a coin. Flip the coin, the first one that gets heads gets the new supplement. Um, and then in this case, right, you basically have like a bunch of little tiny experiments. Um, and you can compare the differences at the end, which is um, what makes the matched pairs design really, uh, really good. So the idea with this one is after you pair them up, you randomly assign one pig to the old food um, and the other to the new one. And then you find the difference between those two pigs. Um, and then you do this again and again and again and again. And basically then at the end, you compare the average difference in weight gain. Um, not the difference of the averages, but the average difference um, that you observe between uh, the old and the new. Okay. Um, so here's a couple AP tips. Um, one I think I already mentioned, but um, you don't want to mix the language of experiments and um, surveys or observational studies. Okay, you're going to lose credit for things like use randomized block design to select the sample for the survey. Um, or the experiment suffers from non-response since subjects dropped out during the study. That's not true because this um, like non-response is for sampling and surveys, not for experiments. Um, and the randomized block design is for experiments not surveys, okay? So be careful, make sure you know the difference in terms. Um, and I'll just make a quick list for you, just so that you, like the things that are commonly um, misconstrued or like misrepresented. So for example, um, blocking in experiments is similar to stratified random samples in observational studies, uh, but not the same thing. Um, completely randomized design is basically the same thing as a simple random sample for experiments um, and the simple random samples for observational studies and sampling. Completely randomized, um, so, sorry, sorry I said that. Uh, matched pairs design um, is something only for experiments. Um, and then you also have a random assignment, which um, in observational studies you have random selection. So basically here you're randomly selecting people to come and take your study um, or your survey. And then in experiments, you don't necessarily need to randomly select people, but you do need to randomly assign them to treatments. So that's a different, um, a different thing. And then like your bias and everything, that's in observational studies and sampling. Um, and then the other thing is uh, be sure to explain why you chose um, a blocking variable. The best explanation um, is that the blocking variable has a strong association with the response variable. So basically, like when we chose to block by the um, temperature of the water, uh, it's because that has been known to strongly affect how clean certain clothes get um, in the past. And then the same thing with the pig example, um, you would think that weight has something to do with how much more they're going to gain. Um, if you have a different factor or a different thing that you think would affect the results, um, that's totally fine. As long as you make the clear argument that like it's it has a strong association with the response variable. Um, so that's about it. All right. Have a great day.